morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever it is, whenever it is in your part of the world. Thanks for tuning in. This is Let's Make Some Noise, episode nine, part one. Again, we're very happy to be here. We actually have a new house today to, uh, to inhabit. This is Taylor Mathern's house. Thank you, Taylor, for letting us uh, pop in. Michael Williams was uh, kind enough to let us shoot many, many episodes, and it was about time we gave him a break. We have some new musicians in the house tonight. Currently on the guitar is Drew Brunson, and we're also going to have Taylor Mathern, Jacob Stanley, and Michael Blunt is going to make a return as well. So lots of guitarists today. We've got a really cool lineup of pedals this week. I think you guys are going to dig it. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and dive in. All right. First up, we have a very special reverb pedal. This has got to be, hands down, one of my favorite personal reverbs. It's the Caroline Guitar Company Meteor. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Meteor, Meteor. However you pronounce it, you can't get a bad sound out of this pedal. It's a very spring-like reverb with almost plate qualities at higher size settings. Four knobs, it's actually pretty no-nonsense, but you can still get a very wide variety of sounds out of it. Um, unlike a lot of spring-sounding reverbs, you get way more decay and, and size out of this reverb, so I really like that about it. Um, the four controls are a level control. You've got an attack, which sets how much gain or saturation you're going to introduce into the reverb, the size of the reverb, and the regeneration. And then it's got this cool Havoc foot switch. So we're going to go ahead and roll up the volume knob and let Jacob take it for a spin. Here's some sounds. more subtle settings. It could absolutely just be a workhorse reverb. This could fit on anybody's rig. Let's introduce some gain into that. We'll come back to that. You can really hear that saturation. All right, as we increase the size and the regeneration. We get into more ambient territory. Very easy to get this pedal into oscillation. But it's also very easy to control. Let's really saturate it and, and hear where this can go. And we're going to kind of compensate with the level as we go. Take the regeneration back, but turn the size up. And we're going to flip into dark mode now. We've currently been in bright mode. So now we really hear this behaving like its namesake, the lo-fi reverberator. the Havoc foot switch out, but I'm going to dial the regeneration back. It can sweep in fast. There's a lot you can do with the Havoc foot switch. 
because the size is set so high right now, it's really jumping in fast and hard. But if we back off, you can get these low and slow swells. And when you release, it's going to return back to wherever you have the regeneration knob currently set at. Overall, just a very, very lovely reverb. We really, really love it. All right. I am very stoked about this one. We have the Stone Deaf Effects Tremotron. This is an incredibly impressive tremolo, and I'm, I'm not just saying that, it is absolutely top tier, for sure. You have two analog tremolo circuits with digital controls, four onboard presets, MIDI capability, and expression input. You can control two different sets of parameters for two different tremolos by pushing on the knobs, it's very cool. And these lights around the parameters show you where you are for your first and second LFOs. Because this is a VCA controlled tremolo, you can get extremely fast speeds on this. So not only is it just a tremolo pedal, but the textures and the tones that you can get outside of this by not only just going extremely high on the rates, but combining the two tremolos is really incredible. Uh, storing presets is really easy. You have tap tempo division here uh, between four different options. You have an actual tap tempo knob. It's incredible. Let's go ahead and dig into it. We're just going to hear some traditional tremolo sounds to kick off. Gorgeous analog tremolo sound. You can already see the green lights around here indicating where your depth and your rate and your wave shape selection is. It's a huge range of wave shapes available for you to select from as well. Let's just try a different wave shape. save some different presets. Swapping is incredibly easy. You just push the tap and the bypass foot switches at the same time. So we have an asymmetrical wave shape here. If I go up with the depth, you can see the lights around that ring. Very cool. Let's go to our third preset we've made. And this is where we've introduced a second tremolo into our sound. You can see the speed of the second LFO is rather fast, while the speed of the first is slow. So you're getting these woo, 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 push and pulls from the first, but the interesting timbre from the second. You can click these knobs to adjust each one. So the red light moves, and that's the second LFO I've adjusted. I click again, now I'm adjusting the first LFO. And the rate goes so fast because of it being a VCA controlled tremolo that we can absolutely get into ring mod territory. So cool. Changing tap tempo divisions on the fly is really easy. It is just such a feature pack tremolo. There's really no denying it. You did a fantastic job, Stone Dev.
All right, moving on. We have the ADD pedals lag. Stands for the Lo-Fi Atmosphere Generator. This is actually, technically, the V2 lag. The original didn't have a modulation section. You had a separate pedal that you could modulate with, but he transferred the modulation section over pretty much identically and combined it on one unit. It's a gorgeous looking pedal. What is the lag? Well, essentially, it is two delay lines that you can run in series or parallel or actually blend kind of uh, somewhere in the middle. Remember, series is going to be a delay running into another delay. And it's, you know, you're able to get really long, drawn out atmospheric tones that way. And parallel is where you're going to really hear the two different delay times, almost as if you're running into two different amps. Okay. You've got a time and a regeneration control for both the delay lines, and then our modulation section is over here. It's really interesting because we also have a light-controlled um, photocell modulation that you can activate on this if you put it in light mode. So the sensor here can be covered or left open um, to achieve different modulation results. It's a little unpredictable, but it's very fun. Um, we also have a master mix control. Let's just roll our volume knob up and and uh, in here a little bit. Right now the modulation is in random mode. Both of our delay times are set to kind of longer times. Let's take the modulation off and here in parallel, one short delay and one long. So now you're getting a chorusy vibe from the first delay but then you're still getting the long delay repeats from the second. I have the mix at 100%. You can definitely put some clean tone in, but with this pedal, I, I really like to hear the mix full up. It's not a dry kill. It's actually a very nice balance. With the regeneration fully maxed on both, one thing I like about this pedal is that it doesn't really quickly get out of hand. So it kind of begs you to crank things up and just bask in the glow without worrying if your amp is going to explode. All right, let's back off the regeneration a little bit, run into series, series mode, and I'm going to mess with the delay time one a little bit them run into each other and let's kick on some modulation let's go into light mode turn up the depth and mess with the sensor a little bit We also have a square wave and a triangle mode. And let's make that modulation depth a little bit more subtle and usable. Oh, man, I really like to live around here. series in parallel mode. Get a little bit more smearing going on. Yeah. Overall, it's just a very lovely dual delay for just lo-fi grainy textures. Very cool. 
Oh, my bad. I meant to uh, give you a little bit of like reverb here. Hold on. So we have a new builder introduced into the series this week. It's done effects, and we're happy to have them. They sent in a few pedals, and this is the first one that we're digging into. It's the purifier, although the U is a V, so maybe it's the purifier. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the purifier is based off of the old Ibanez LF7. I've seen that pedal around, never quite played it, but it's essentially a filter pedal that people would use to get more lo-fi tones. It's an analog drive. So you've got a gain knob, you've got your volume, and you have a high cut and a low cut. So you can combine the high cut and the low cut, you know, to find any variety of like filtered out tones that you want for your drive. And the little I've played it, I find it's just very tasteful. Nothing really jumps out too sharp. Um, the roll off is very smooth and it's very easy to find a quick sound that is just very pleasing to the ears. So let's roll up our volume knob and we're gonna mess around with it for a sec. It's kind of low gain to mid gain. All right, so we're sweeping that high cut there. We also have a low cut introduced as well. Kind of like a band pass filter here. You also could perform some filter sweeps manually. It's not really what's intended for this pedal, but... All right, so I'm gonna cut the lows. I'm gonna get a very mid-rangey, Queen of the Stone Age style sound. Let's click the pedal off. So there's your tone, normally, just out of the amp, right? You can really hear that change. It's very interesting. It's a total color box drive. So you could use this to actually color your other drives as well, because rolling the game knob down will get you pretty damn near clean. Yeah, overall, you can see a lot of uses for, for this drive. I really dig it. Yeah. All right, finally, very excited to finally run some sounds through the Polar Bear FX Drowner. This is one of my favorite pedals of all time. You will not see a combination of sounds and tones like this in any other guitar pedal. It's really just such a creatively designed pedal, just like all of Darko at Polar Bear's pedals. The Drowner is many things, and you can use it for many things. It's a reverb, an ambient reverb, a shimmer reverb, a bit crusher, sample rate reducer, a fuzz pedal, and then it's all of those things at once or independently. And you can also change the order of some of these effects. So let's just hear what the shimmer reverb sounds right off the bat. You have independent level controls for the shimmer, which is an octave up, and it's only on your wet signal. And then you have a sort of a reverb intensity knob. So this is just one half of the pedal. We can introduce bit crushing into this reverb. Sweep the sample rate to kind of find a tone that works with what you're playing. You can really crush it down 
This is Bit Crusher running into reverb. Let's flip the order. So the effect is more pronounced now. Reverb running into Bit Crusher. We can get very intense with this if you want. All right, let's uh, turn on the fuzz side of the pedal. The fuzz only has one control, and that is a volume of the fuzz. So to gain down, you would control this from your guitar's volume control, and it works really well. Let's hear the fuzz by itself. Let's hear fuzz with bit crushing and no reverb. How about all three? And now, let's go fully 100% wet, kill the dry, get rid of the crush, and just hear what this thing can do as an ambient tool. We can take the shimmer out. Gorgeous, to my ears, hall sounding reverb. Lots of decay. Just a very tastefully designed pedal. Yeah, okay. So, uh, moving on, we have the Spaceman FX Saturn 6 Harmonic Boost and Low Gain Drive. I did a demo on this pedal about two and a half years ago. Absolutely fell in love with it. I have had it around ever since. It's a very versatile, usable low gain drive um, that can be used to greatly enhance the top-end sparkle of your other drives, your fuzzes, your distortions, or even just your tube amp. Uh, and right now, all we have this plugged into is the Silk Tone amp, although we've attenuated it, and so you will hear this pushing some of the tubes as we get into some of the, you know, more gained up sounds in the pedal. Right off the bat, we have the drive set pretty low and it's not exactly a clean boost it's definitely dirty in all settings but the boost and the drive controls work in tandem to achieve a variety of sounds in between just this light crisp sparkle that you hear to full-on blown out distortion depending on where your volume or your gain is set on your amp or what other pedals you're using with it so it's a very interactive pedal all right, so we're going to roll the volume knob up and let's just uh, start off with the low gain and we'll work our way up. It's very quick to drive in the pushed setting that we have on our amp right now. So the gain is actually pretty low right now, but you can hear it's pretty crunchy. Boost control is going to introduce even order harmonics, while the drive is going to increase those, but also add to the odd order harmonics. And this combination can 
can get you some pretty extreme sounds. So I'm going to leave the drive up. But bring the boost back. Let's get an interesting kind of overdrive texture here. And let's flip flop that. All right, let's do something less blown out. And if things get too dark or muddy, the tone control is a great solution for that. All right, now the drive is all the way up, but rolling the boost back, totally changes the character and that full blown out sound. So now we've actually got a very usable overdrive. a very interesting fuzz pedal up next. Uh, we have Wetmar Electronics from Australia. It's the first Australian builder on the series as well. It's a very simple interface. As you can see, there is just a selector switch, which is funny because they also have a pedal called selector. And you can switch from A, B, and C modes with a secondary foot switch to enter the forbidden mode as uh, described on their page. This, this company's very mysterious. Uh, it's very interesting when builders kind of go this route. I, I don't really know much about the design of this pedal. Um, so really, we're just gonna go off of what we are hearing, kind of trying to break it down. Um, so let's uh, roll our volume knob up and we're just gonna dig into mode A and hear what we're dealing with. All right, so as you can hear, it's a very square wave sounding fuzz. As the name would imply, computer two. All right, let's flip into mode B. Ooh. You definitely have some, some bit crushing mixed into that fuzz sound. Lots of high-end harmonics going on there. All right, let's check out C. Almost like you have some random pitch jumping along with the bit crushing. So maybe a randomized sample rate <laughs> Fluctuation happening. Let's check out the forbidden mode. All right, this sounds actually a lot like mode A, but higher gained. You can really hear the ones and the zeros in the background. Obviously lots of sustain on tap here. Next, we have the haunting Economicon from Foul Sounds. This is a really interesting pedal. Splits your signal into two different paths, and one follows into a PT-2399 delay chip, which is already, as we've learned with many of these pedals, a very staticky, haunting-sounding lo-fi delay chip, but then follows into a built-in brick reverb. 
You find this combination occasionally. This champion lechi swan hunter comes to mind. It's a really cool combo of um, lo-fi sounding chips. And then your other signal is dry, but you can add overdrive to it. And it's like a low to mid gain drive. You can add saturation to your wet signal. Um, things can get real murky and dark and, and evil sounding. You've got a mix knob, a tone, which is basically a um, high cut. So if things get overly out of hand and bright, you can tame it back. You've got dwell for the size, the you know the length of your reverb, and you've got a time control and a feedback control for the delay. So let's roll up our volume knob and we'll hear some more subdued tones and then we'll gain it up. I'm going to introduce some gain to the delay and reverb. And I'm going to compensate by lowering the master volume here. We can get into oscillation here. But I'm going to be very careful with this pedal because I've noticed Unlike something like the Caroline Meteor, the oscillation doesn't exactly fall away. It's more of a slow glide down. A lot of times with these pedals, it also is dependent on where your feedback knob is located currently. Yeah, and that died a lot quicker because I lowered the feedback knob down. That sounds really nice. Let's add the drive to the dry signal, and we're going to hear what some lead would sound like with this. Very cool pedal. A lot of sound options in here. I can see a lot of, a lot of uses for this, for sure. All right. Up next, we have the Fjord Fuzz Fry. It's the first non-dirt pedal they've sent on in the series, and it is a univibe, all analog vibrato, very lush, very warm sounding. The center knob is basically your rate control. It's very simple, simple interface, very easy to use. And you've got two foot switches here. So just reading from the manual, it seems like their intent for this was to be able to swap between two depth presets on the fly. Well, why would you want this? It's actually a lot of reasons that I could think of. I mean, Univibe at extreme depths is uh, an effect that can really get out of hand. Um, and sometimes frequencies can just peak and, and get out of control, right? Sometimes this is really cool, and you might want that for a certain section of a song or just at least a very um, intense effect. And then for another part, you might just want some subtle movement, so that's really cool. You can flip-flop between the two depths. But also, as they point out, of course, if you add dirt or you know a fuzz pedal and overdrive into the circuit, it tends to also make vibrato sort of more harsh to the ears so you can attenuate that issue by clicking on the second foot switch flip into this lower depth it's an interesting idea so let's just kick the pedal on and hear what it sounds off right at the bat the speed all the way up doesn't get out of hand it's very usable 
Very lush, psychedelic sounding. Chewy, very, very chewy vibrato. It's, you know, Univibes almost have this phaser-like quality. So that full depth. I find that's a very usable rate setting. Of course, this is very extreme. So let's get into a situation where we were going to kick on a dirt pedal beforehand and flip to the other mode. Using the Dunn FX purifier filter drive here. Let's swap out. You see at the higher depth setting, it's just too extreme. Although some people might enjoy that, of course. Alright, the GFI system Skylar reverb. This is a small box, but completely epic and powerful digital reverb with four different unique modes and lots of different parameters to explore within them. You've got expression capabilities. You've got a secondary foot switch for ramping parameters that you can assign. You've got the nice bright LED display to really see what's going on and remember settings. You can recall two presets by flipping back and forth the AB toggle. If you hold this down, you can engage tap tempo mode and tap in some of the things like the tremolo rate on the tremolo verb and things like that. Let's just uh, engage in the spatium mode, which is uh, one that's returning from the specular tempest. Lovely. At face value, you have three different parameters that are going to do different things in the different modes. In spatium mode, the first parameter is modulation, so we can increase the depth of that. You have decay here, so we can get extremely ambient. of GFI system pedals, if you push and twist the knobs, you can access secondary parameters. So let's do that. So here we find a low frequency EQ. We can add in lows or zap them out. We've got your highs that you can control. And then we have an added delay in spatial mode, which is partly what makes it sound so drawn out and ambient. Let's go ahead and try a different mode here. I had that decay set very high from the last mode. You can really hear those shimmery reverbs wanting to jump out. You still hear that modulation in play, too. Check out what we can do with the shimmer. So we can also set it to fifths instead of just octaves. <laughs> Which is interesting, but only useful for certain applications. If you adjust your composition to make it fit, it can be really cool. Let's go into the plate reverb. full 
beautiful sounding haunting plate reverb. Also has delay. And tremolo reverb. It's called tremble mode. If we hold down the AB foot switch, we switch into a tap setting. spacious sounding reverb that it's hard to find a bad sound out of. Also new to the series today is October Audio. They sent in their junk lantern, Garage Octave Fuzz. It's a really unique sounding fuzz for sure. It's inspired by the Green Ringer. And if you're not familiar, it's an octave pedal you can stick on the back end or the front end of things and just get this extra um, upper frequency character that you can add to your drives or your fuzzes or whatever, right? On its own, you can use it as a dirty octave up, which can add its really cool, unique harmonic excitement and character. Uh, and it's got these two additional modes. The first one is pretty low gain, the bass mode, right? But as you flip the switch up, you're going to get into this full frequency higher gain mode, and down is going to be a high frequency higher gain mode. Let's hear it by itself, and then we're going to put it after the polar bear drowner fuzz to see how it could alter that. As you can hear, there's still all the low end of the bass there, but it's just the upper frequencies that are more pronounced, and it's not clean. It's definitely dirty. All right, let's see what uh, would happen if we flip the toggle switch up. We're gonna get a big volume boost, so I'm gonna attenuate here. Very zippy, synthy sounding. All right, let's kick this off and put on the polar bear drowner fire. It's already a zippy sounding fuzz in and of itself. And let's go back to the bass mode of the jump lantern. That is super synthy sounding. I mean, like, just fantastic texture, kills on bass. All right, let's hear what happens when we go to the high frequency, higher gain mode. So they weren't kidding when they said garage fuzz. It's definitely this. Nasty tone. Let's go to the full frequency. So your low gain is still totally kept intact. It's just a nasty fuzz. It's awesome. Back to the bass mode. Awesome. Awesome. All right, that is gonna do it for us tonight. We've had a lot of fun. This has been a really cool collection of pedals and I've got a fine group of players behind me just taking their, their time to come and help out for the project. So I really appreciate that. I really appreciate you, the viewers that are tuning in and watching every time that we, uh, we put out our episodes and of course the sponsors that make all of this possible. Don't forget to stick around. In just a few seconds, we're gonna show what gear 
we're giving away and maybe you could take home with you. So until uh, next time, see you on the next episode.